There is some guy on the internet. His name is Baker. He is a paleo exaying doctor. He has his license take away. It appears that he had his New Mexico medical license taken away for failure to report adverse action taken by a healthcare entity and incompetence to practice as a licensee. He he eats um, mostly flesh diet when animal meat diet. He was a cult leader by any means. Because he actually ordered his followers, his subscribers, to be disrespectful and being annoying to vegans. He doesn't set time. Is to ignore them, don't comment on them. It's like talking to a cow. Some really block them all. Don't even engage with, with them. Uh, if they make a comment on something you don't like, just ignore them. Don't even respond. Peace and cruel bastards. Peace and peace of crap. Vegan stuff, whether it's fake meat, uh, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll do whatever they can to get across a religious dogma. So Carnism is one a violent ideology that allows people to eat certain animals not other animals and brings one discriminating area between it. Carnishma these words come from the Latin word carn say car carn carnism and the words is what means when ideology or a belief system it is the invisible or hidden belief system that allows people to love and want to protect dogs and cats but are violent and indifferent about the suffering of chickens, pigs. This is a violent ideology based on arbitrary criteria. Discrimination. Discrimination is an attitude or bias in favor of somebody's group. Around group can be in this part one skin color, being male or female. Been a pig or a cow or a pig or a chicken, be a cow or a dog, be a chicken or a guinea pig. Uh, they'll lie, they'll cheat. They'll Eight. The stories aren't true. I often hear it said, seemingly in an effort to reassure themselves as much as anyone else, that the graphic footage taken on farms must not be representative of the wider industry, that it's just a few bad apples. Well, they didn't have video cameras back in the 1800s, but the stories of cruelty to slaves that circulated were met with similar defensive machinations. Hammond was quick to suggest that the stories described were isolated incidents and exaggerated besides, saying that you should not take what reaches you as a mere sample and infer that there is a vast deal more that you never hear. You hear all, and more than all. They're one-sided, they don't tell all the facts. Perhaps you yourself have caught the odd glimpse of the footage of animal abuse that goes on on farms, but pushed it out of your mind, as one is naturally wont to do, telling yourself that it was probably from a foreign country with lower welfare standards, because nothing so horrific would ever be allowed to happen in your backyard. And indeed, people were encouraged to take refuge in such notions in the 1800s. As Hammond assured his readers, the research and ingenuity of the abolitionists, aided by the invention of runaway slaves, in which faculty so far as improvising falsehoods goes, the African race is without rival, have succeeded in shocking the world with a small number of pretended instances of our barbarity. The only wonder is that, considering the extent of our country, variety of our population, its fluctuating character, and the publicity of all our transactions, the number of cases collected is so small. It speaks well for us. 
Yet of these, many are false, all highly coloured, some occurring half a century, most of them many years ago, and no doubt a large proportion of them perpetrated by foreigners. As I said, we have the benefit of video cameras now. I think the fact that people will still seek solace in the belief that what they're seeing, or avoiding seeing, doesn't happen speaks to how upsetting the idea of animal cruelty is to each one of us, to the goodness of people. But facing the ugly truth of the situation has to be the first step towards... Because he kills innocent living beings, however, and never do on him, even a little crawl. Only for the satisfaction of <laughs> of his taste buds, a little wisp of Let's be play, playing game. Imagine somebody say that they're lied to abuse children and that, that feel them a good, give them a good feeling. Do you say that therefore it is justifiable? Imagine in the country where this is happening, the people in question uh, have any right to do that because there's no law that protects the children. Make that it good? There's no law against it. Of course not. That would be ridiculous. And the same thing is with the consumption of animal products. There are no laws against it. And therefore is it good? In Saudi Arabia, you can marry one nine-year-old child. It make it not good. It still make it really uncool in my understanding. I don't uh, go to the law to make something, uh, to cite to something that I find it illegal. The law don't indicate my morals. I write my own rules. I don't break good laws. As Dr. Luther King once said, somebody have a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Because one unjust law is not a law. his own words. So... There are own power. There are only power. Those kind of laws. And if you ask me, somebody that break an unjust law shall not deserve to be put in prison and punished for breaking an unjust law. For example, all activists don't deserve to be put in prison. Vivisections deserve to vivisection doctors deserve to be put in prison. Farmers deserve to be put in prison. Not the Allied forces of this time, the of and the arm and the Earth Liberation Front. They are not the terrorists. It's the people who work for the businesses that destroy and cannibalize the world in a shop. People who don't live with the law of the first mind when that do their actions. There have always to be the first in an ecosystem to be qualified as one healthy environment or ecosystem. Since capitalism is might might right, is the power of the strongest. One very primitive understanding of the world where we live in. First. 
But I have to mention, on his Twitter, he refers to himself as a citizen science enabler. What is citizen science? Something tells me it's bro science. Yes, he has extensively studied Facebook groups. You know, I studied these large Facebook groups like an anthropologist. You know, like they used to study these people, you know, 100 years ago, they go out, you know, Weston Price, we've got, you know. But so when you go in these groups and you just want, you know, all you can do is like reading this like a scientist going, okay, this guy went on this diet and his joint went away. This guy went on this diet and his thyroid disease went away. This guy went on this diet. I'm sorry, but those are selectively shared personal anecdotes, not peer reviewed studies. So. Why should we take this fool serious, this baker guy? And his cult follow-ups. I'll also eat the carnivore diet. Or must I say, the necrophore diet. In other words, why causing intentional harm to other living beings when you not have to harm other living beings to be healthy? You can go vegan and try to convince others to do like that. It won't cost any harm. Vegetables eliminate, curate, abandons, and narcissism. <laughs> Veganism can maybe bring this world to peace. And stop the world from It can be easily actually, if you look about how much animals people race in this moment for consumption is 60 to 70 billion and that there are only members from the meat animal meat dairy and egg industry themselves so the numbers can be on and we have only seven and a half billion people of our species they're all more ridiculous so like I to refer to them on this planet. So each veganism can easily stop world hunger. It take up to 60 to 60 to 26 ton a pound of uh, plants product herbs uh, create one pound of flesh according to sources. I can show you if you want. It's only a matter of logic. You have a large animal that have to eat large amount of food. They're over a half year by pigs and by cows over two um, two years at least. And some two years yet for their go to execution. The animals have to eat. It is just plain logic. I just say. And also, only some 40 to 45% of the animal is used in the meat industry. All the other stuff that is not edible are uh, being put into the trash or are being uh, used as products. Or something like uh, cat food and dog food, or being sometimes even ground up into powder and be mixed to the food of the animals, and that's how we get Alzheimer's and all that other diseases. How uh, affect people's memory and intelligence. Like Alzheimer, what uh, other? That's funny stuff. The lot more what I can tell you about that. You just have to wait to the next episode. Yeah, well, no. It's now passivity is over. We need to act. We need to act in a very aggressive way. Okay.